top 8 insulation and temperature control strategies for shipping container homes. Shipping containers are made of steel. Steel is a good conductor of heat, therefore, to live in a shipping container home, you need design and proper insulation. In cold climates, proper insulation to keep the home warm and to prevent condensation which can corrode the container and form mold should be observed. However, in a hot climate, keeping the heat away from the container is of paramount importance. This video brings to you the pros and cons of the top 8 insulation and temperature control strategies for shipping container homes. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for our weekly videos on shipping container homes. Stay tuned and enjoyed the video. Number 8. Spray Foam Insulation. Spray foam insulation is formed from a mixture of resins that come together at the tip of a gun, to produce an expanding foam that is sprayed onto finished building surfaces as insulation. Spray foam insulation can be categorized into two different types, open cell spray foam insulation and closed cell spray foam insulation. Closed cell spray foam insulation outperforms the open cell insulation. It has a resistance value of 6, the highest ranking on the market. Apart from being the thinnest option at 2 inches thick, the biggest advantage of spray foam insulation is the ability to serve as a semi-permeable vapor barrier consequently preventing condensation, which can cause dampness and mold. Unlike bats and blankets, spray foam expands during curing providing excellent resistance to air infiltration. The biggest disadvantage of closed cell spray foam insulation is the high cost. Spray foam insulation is typically non-toxic. While curing, Spray foam emits a gas that can cause blurred vision and breathing difficulties. When applying the product is recommended to use full face and respiratory protection. Number 7. Glass Wool Insulation Blanket. This is the most common style house insulation. Glass wool comes in two forms, as bats which are pre-cut, or blankets which are available in continuous rolls. Compressing the material reduces its effectiveness. In addition, cutting it to accommodate electrical boxes and other obstructions allows air infiltration. For increased effectiveness, install bats in two layers across an unfinished attic floor, perpendicular to each other, to prevent heat bridging. There are two common types of glass wall blankets, mineral wool and fiberglass. Start by lining the walls with horizontal timber battens attached to the sides of the container with a vapor barrier behind them. Roll in the insulation and cover it up with plasterboard or plywood paneling. The biggest challenge of blanket insulation is that it occupies the much needed space in a shipping container. Fiberglass is the most common residential insulating material. Kindly familiarize yourself with the health and safety concerns before using it. Number 6. Structurally Insulation Panels SIPs. A structurally insulation panel is a sandwich-structured composite panel, consisting of an insulating layer of rigid core sandwiched between two layers of structural board. The board can be sheet metal, plywood, cement board and the core made with expanded polystyrene foam. Structurally insulation panels combine several components of conventional building, such as, insulation, vapor barrier and air barrier making them ideal for shipping container home insulation. If the space requirement of structurally insulation panels is a challenge in your container home project, only the expanded polystyrene form insulation panels can be bought at predefined sizes and then fitted in the gaps of a stud wall. The panels have a high insulating value of more than 6 for their relatively small depth. Number 5. Plastered Finish. A plastered finish can either be cement, or clay and sand. The exterior walls or roof are lined with timber battens followed by a chicken wire nailed onto the battens to increase the surface area of holding the clay and sand mixture in place. Once the wall has cured and dried, a colored mixture of mud puree can be applied to give it a nice smooth finish. The biggest advantage of a clay plaster is the cost. Unfortunately, 
A clay plastered finish is not ideal for interior spaces in wet and cold climates. A similar process can be applied when using cement sand plaster, in both wet and hot climates for exterior and interior finishes. A good case study is the Cytodox student housing project, located in Le Havre, France. To ensure maximum heat and sound insulation, the walls of the container are adjacent to the outside and those that divide the different units have been coated with firewalls in reinforced concrete 40 cm wide. Number 4. Eco-Friendly Insulation Materials The health and safety concerns of traditional insulation materials has been in the limelight lately. Most green building practices are shunning most of these materials. There are a lot of promising new materials being used for insulation lately such as, sheep wool, natural cotton and straw bowl because of their higher values and their organic qualities. Due to the limited space inside shipping containers the sheer size of straw bowls can only be used on the exterior of the building. Other non-organic materials such as aerogel, and isine are highly recommended. Unlike other foams, isine spray in foam, is water-blown and produces no off-gases whatsoever. Aerogel is a super-futuristic form of frozen silica smoke, made of a special type of super-porous silicon foam that is 99% air. The biggest drawback on organic insulation is that they are expensive. They cost three to four times more than traditional insulation. Number 3. Recycled Materials. The biggest candidate for this category is cellulose. Cellulose is made from bits of recycled newspaper shredded up and sprayed into a space. It is cheap, effective and easy to install compared with other types of insulation. On the downside, shredded up newspaper is highly flammable, hygroscopic, prone to pests and rodents, and it can get dump and moldy. It can cause condensation inside a shipping container house hence caution should be observed. Not all recycled materials are like cellulose. Recycled denim, popularly known as blue jeans is a very good source of recycled cotton insulation. This organic insulation is made from recycled blue jeans, which is 100% recycled good, old-fashioned cotton. The last two strategies are not insulation methods per se. They are passive temperature control strategies that can enhance the thermal comfort of your shipping container home through design. The following two techniques are the most cost-effective strategies to employ if you are building in the tropical climate. Number 2. Reflective Roofs and Walls. The biggest challenge when building a shipping container home in the tropics is keeping away the heat from the house. The container house can be covered with a slanting, elevated corrugated steel roof to protect it from rain and direct solar radiation. The corrugated steel roof should be elevated above the container roof to allow for airflow to keep the container interior cool in summer. When the cold topical breezes drafts under the elevated roof, they convey away the hot air above the container roof cooling the interior of the container. The slanting roof will allow the hot air under the roof to rise and the cold air to move in helping keeping the air above the container cooler through conventional currents. Design openings in opposite walls of the container to allow for cross ventilation which will aid in air movement and temperature control. Visage or Primary School is one good example of how an elevated reflective roof can be used to take advantage of the natural environment to keep the container classroom cool. Finally at number 1. Living Roofs and Walls. A living roof is not a replacement for insulation. However, a living roof reduces indoor summer temperatures by 6 to 8 percent, cutting down on air conditioning costs. The most obvious plus of a planted roof or a roof garden is its charm and beauty. The roof garden should be planted with native plants and flowers to enhance its sustainability properties. Design the garden planter in such a way that it sit in a steel frame above the roof of the container, to allow airflow and keep the weight off the non-structural container roof. A living roof offers no insulation benefits in wet weather, but the vegetation helps trap blowing snow for insulation benefits. It also protects your roof, extending its life expectancy.
A trellis planted with natural vines and climbers is also a natural way to shield the steel walls of the container from direct solar radiation in the tropics. The Shipping Container Guest House by Jim Petit Architects, located in San Antonio, Texas, is a good example of how a roof garden can be used to effectively control the thermal comfort of a container house. Depending on your location, a shipping container home with proper temperature control strategies built with the local climate in mind, can be one of the most rewarding experiences. Did you find our strategies exhaustive and informative enough to help you effectively insulate your container home project? If you feel we have left out something, kindly let us know by posting in the comments below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, and feel free to share it. Remember to subscribe for our weekly videos on shipping container homes. See you in the next video.